Welcome to the review of the spleen. My name is James O'Sullivan and um, we'll start off with the associations of the spleen. Of course its exterior partner is the stomach and the channel starts at the medial aspect of the great toe and it ends uh, six on below the axilla. The official according to the five elements would be it's the official in charge of the granaries. The element is, of course, is earth, and the emotion associated with the spleen are worry, pensiveness, overthinking, and it dislikes dampness. The spleen is an important organ for us in this first year of Twena, and the points that we're going to cover are spleen 1, 3, 4, 6, 9, 10, and 15. The spleen is called the foundation of post heaven existence. Uh, it extracts essential nutrients or food chi from food and liquids which is or which has been prepared by the stomach it's the root of all postnatal chi first function that we need to look at is trans or transformation and transportation t and t uh, the spleen and stomach work intimately to convert these essential nutrients of food into gu chi and from the food and liquid the spleen derives key nutrients uh, for making chi and blood and is the primary organ looked at when these two essential substances are not balanced that is chi and blood the spleen extracts chi from food and sends it up to the lungs where it combines with chi of the air and original chi or ancestral chi yuan chi to form true chi or upright chi of the body. It is this final type of chi that will be sent through the blood and channels of the rest of the body. When the spleen is functioning properly, chi is strong, digestion goes smoothly, and the body is kept moist. When the spleen is not functioning, chi is weak, uh, appetite is poor, digestion is sluggish, and the stools may be loose and phlegm and dampness may accumulate. Once the food chi is extracted and formed, the spleen transports this to various organs and to other parts of the body. This demonstrates the spleen's importance in the digestive process and the formation of chi and blood. If the functioning is diseased, there will be poor appetite, uh, loose bowel movements, bad digestion, bloating, and other digestive discomforts. The spleen also controls the transformation and transportation of fluids, where the spleen separates the pure from the impure. The pure part is sent up to the lungs for distribution to the skin, and the impure or turbid part goes down to the intestines and the kidneys for further refinement. In good health, the correct transforming and transporting function of the spleen chi will ensure good digestion, good appetite, normal absorption and regular bowel movements. If the transformation and transportation function is impaired, then fluids will accumulate uh, to form dampness or phlegm, uh, causing edema. A little bit about dampness, uh, the spleen dislikes dryness and hates dampness according to the ancient classics its transformation and transportation function can be impaired by forming foods such as salads dairy product fried greasy foods um, basically foods that cause mucus or cause heavy sensations in the body would be considered damp forming foods cold can also affect spleen yang excessive consumption of cold liquids especially ice cream, uh, ice water, icing in, in, in our drinks, especially in cold climates. This can affect spleen yang. Deficient chi or yang of the spleen can cause internal dampness. When the spleen is not functioning correctly, dampness can form internally. External dampness can also affect the spleen. For instance, living in a damp environment can cause uh, spleen disharmonies. Spleen is always treated when there's dampness phlegm or edema in the body. There are two aspects to the spleen controlling blood. First is in the formation of blood. The spleen pa plays 
an essential role in the formation of blood because it provides the basic material, the food essences which rise up to the lungs and then the heart to form blood. The spleen is the central organ in the production of both blood and chi and this also explains why it is called the root of post heaven chi. Therefore we must reinforce the spleen in either chi or blood deficiencies. Secondly, it keeps the blood in the blood vessels. If spleen chi is healthy, with the help of the liver, blood circulates normally and stays in the blood vessels. If the holding function of the spleen is weak, blood may easily leak out of the blood vessels, resulting in uh, hemorrhages, subcutaneous bleeding. A person that easily bruises has a spleen disharmony. Spider nervi, varicose veins. The spleen dominates or controls the muscles and the four limbs. The spleen extracts food chi from the food and so that it can nourish all tissues of the body and the spleen itself is responsible for transporting this refined chi. If it's strong then the spleen will transport this refined chi to all the muscles especially in the limbs. The spleen is all important in determining the amount of energy that a person has for their daily living. Therefore, when there's signs of fatigue or tiredness, the spleen must be treated. In good health, the muscles on the limbs are well nourished. If there's a deficiency of spleen chi, then the person will feel tired all the time and the muscles will feel weak and in severe cases they may atrophy. The spleen opens into the mouth. Here again we see the connection with the spleen's responsibility of refining food and transporting it to different sang fu or organs. It's also responsible for the five flavors and as a result the five tastes. When spleen chi is normal the sense of taste is good and the lips are moist and rosy. The mouth in good health will be slightly moist the lips will be lustrous and the uh, not dry and they have a good sense of taste. Spleen manifests on the lips. If the spleen has heat the patient will complain of dry lips and a sweet taste in the mouth. If the spleen chi is deficient the patient may have pale lips from lack of nourishment. If the spleen is weak there's a sense of taste may be dulled. The spleen also controls the raising of chi. Chi would hold all of the organs in their place. So if the spleen chi is weak, prolapses may occur. Stomach and spleen have the dual and complementary functions of descending and raising chi respectfully. The stomach as part of its ingesting function draws food downwards and after it has been uh, rottened and ripened it is sent downwards further to the small intestine and in a broader sense through to the whole digestive tract. Spleen chi goes up and stomach chi goes down. The spleen ensures that all internal zang fu stay in their place and do not fall or prolapse. If spleen chi is weak or sink, sinks the kidneys, uterus, stomach, bladder or anus may prolapse or there may be hemorrhoids. Spleen houses thought. The spleen is said to be the residence of thought or yi, which influences our capacity for thinking, studying, concentration, memorizing or focus. How well we manage things that require concentration is dependent on the strength of the spleen. So if you want to pass that test, make sure your spleen chi is strong. The heart and kidneys also aid in thought. The spleen is more involved in thinking processes like work or school whereas the heart is involved with problem solving long term memory and the kidneys nourish the brain and short term memory. This shows why people can be genius in a particular field but absent minded in everyday life activities. Excessive thought or thinking can injure the spleen. Uh, if spleen chi is weak, thought will be clouded and unclear, thinking dull, poor concentration, poor memory. Excessive studying mental work will weaken the spleen. That's it for the review of the spleen 
I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Sláinte.